Thank you uh, for joining me today. Absolutely. Happy to be here, Elias. Exciting times, you know. Uh, listeners of viewers of Twin City View, they can see you in your latest project, uh, Buddy Games, Spring Awakening, which is a sequel. Uh, I find those type of movies hilarious and funny. Uh, what's your thoughts on all this? I find this movie hilarious and funny too. I loved being on it. When I first read the script, I was laughing out loud. So I thought, let's do it. I did watch the first one during the audition process just to familiarize with who these guys were. Yeah. Um, enjoyed it. I mean, I wanted to enjoy it too, right? I watched it with my yeah. whole family. And uh, yeah, it was a real blast. It was great to do comedy and uh, cut my teeth on that. And I'd like to do more Check. of it. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we're going to jump uh, a little bit uh, more into the movie in a little bit, but, uh, you know, I want to do, I want to get to know a little more about you and everything. I did some research, research and everything. Uh, You started acting at a very young age. I saw, you know, I, uh, I wanted to act at a really young age, but it took until my early twenties to actually take it very seriously. So yes and no, it's like, I wanted to, but I didn't have the, uh, my parents weren't the type to encourage that. They just kind of let me do my thing. And so it was in my early 20s that um, I was dabbling in it. And somebody I knew, uh, a very lovely acquaintance of mine, sat me down one day and was like, you got to, if you want to take this seriously, you got to, you got to go train in, in New York. And so that's when, when things really started for me. Well, uh, when-, when you were, when you were young, when you were younger, uh, I saw that it kind of hit like around the age of six, right? So, yeah. So I, I proclaimed to my parents that I was going to be an actress. <laughs> but it's funny because, you know, people have stories of like the first show they saw or and yeah. I didn't. I just said I wanted to be an actress. I grew up in Israel for most of my childhood and I wasn't exposed to theater or even that much film, to be honest. My parents weren't in the arts. And so I just said this thing and my parents were like, oh, that's so sweet, <laughs> you know, and. And I didn't know what it meant until many years later, but I think I was meant like, this is what I meant to do. So mm-hmm. I just sort of knew it. What was your parents' reaction when you told them in your twenties that you, this, you're going for this? They were very supportive. There's one thing, my dad, um, one of the main things I take away from my father and my mom is that they said, no matter what you do, it's, it's gotta be something you love. And that you want to wake up to every day. So I didn't get a lot of pushback from my family. Just not a lot of that support that you can get at a young age. But, you know, everyone has a different story. So, yeah, they were very supportive. And they supported me going to New York to study. And they're proud of me. Was there ever a backup plan with anything? No. Uh, No. I had one uh, short period in my life where things weren't quite meshing and going the way I wanted. And I went, okay, what am I going to do? if I, if I'm not going to do this acting and mm. I kind of wanted to be a doula. <laughs> do you know what that is? <laughs> no, please tell me. It's a, it's a support. A doula supports uh, birthing, like okay. bringing children. In. Oh, and they can also support um, death. So I really am passionate about childbirth. And it was this thing. I was like, Oh, I could do this. But I was like, I don't think I could handle the blood. So anyways, I stuck with acting. <laughs> I think you, you made the better choice, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's a cool job, but not for everyone. Really? Um, so th- you've done a, a few projects already also. Like what's been like your uh, your favorite project you've worked on like or biggest accomplishment so far in your young career? Well, you know, honestly, Buddy Games um, has I, I really loved playing the role and being a part of that experience because it was so much more collaborative than anything else I'd done before where I was really like, working stuff out in there, you know, in in real time. Also, the character itself is one that comes not very often, just like this really wild, big character, larger than life, a fun villain. So that was a big, um, a big milestone. But also the first project I ever booked was with Ang Lee. So I was six months out of theater school and I booked this beautiful six week job on Ang Lee's film, Taking Woodstock. And, um, we were up in upstate New York working like as my character was a member of like this avant-garde theater troupe. And so it was like a group of us working together. And anyway, it was like, it felt like a mix of theater and film because we were actually playing theater artists. Mm. And it was, yeah, the first job I ever had was like a really good one. Mm. You mentioned theater. What do you enjoy more now? TV, film or theater or both? What's the, where, where, where's the love? I need them both. I really do. Uh, I love theater because 
of that rehearsal process, that space you get into when you like are figuring it out together. It's kind of like, uh, not like writing, but you're, you're figuring things out in real time. Whereas on set, you show up and you've already done all your work on your own and you're, you know, you gotta be flexible to what other people are bringing to the table, but it's, yeah. you're coming in and you're just getting it done. Whereas with theater, I just love the rehearsals. What do you find more easy to prepare for theater or TV film? Depends on the project, I guess. Yeah, I'm working on a theater project right now that is really tricky and, and you know, we're like trying to figure it out and discovering it in real time. And so it's feeling like like work, you yeah. know, was buddy games. I mean, I did so much work at home, but I showed up on set and just got it yeah. done. Yeah. So, yeah, let's jump uh, jump into a buddy games. You mentioned you're reading the script uh, and uh, you're watching the first movie as well. Uh, tell us a about, about your audition process for this. It was so painless. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I It was, so I, I had my first audition. I loved the role. So I put a lot of heart into it. It's comedy. So it was um, a little bit more fine-tuned than a more organic, dramatic process. And then I got a call back. It was on Zoom, as they are often these days. It mm. was the producers and Josh himself, just the two of them. I did my takes. They laughed. They said they loved it. And that was it. There was no redirects. There was nothing. And so then very shortly after I found out, I booked it. And when I did get on set, both Josh and the producer said, like, we knew right away, which happens a lot, right? I mean, sometimes yeah. it's, it's a longer process for people, but this was... Yeah, they just. So we see you as uh, we see you as Phoenix. What was the like the description you were given for this character? I can't even remember. I feel like I think of her as this cult leader who's, you know, a, a, a cult leader. Um, and they use the term woke, which I think is a controversial kind of term these days. And people are like, well, that's not what it means. And, you know, yeah. whatever. That's what I uh, got. And so, uh, yeah, and it was. It's in the script. Like you can't do it small. It's, it's she's just so crazy. She's so off. <laughs> yeah, I can tell we're watching this. It's like, yeah, your character is all over the place in a way. She's absolutely insane. Um, and that was that was very clear in the in the text. So that's where I went with it. What do you think was like the biggest challenge, like playing this character? Any challenges? Uh, one of the biggest, well, she talks a lot. She's like monologues and monologues and monologues throughout. And she carries a lot of the scenes that she's in. She's really in charge and navigating everybody. So it felt really good, but it was also a little intimidating to come in and work with these amazing comedians yeah. and, and with Josh and to kind of take up so much space. So it was a challenge, but also a joy. You mentioned Josh. Uh, did he give you any tips for being part of this project? Any pointers, uh, any advice? Uh, he didn't give me any advice per se. He made it real. He made me feel so comfortable and welcoming right from the get go. But there were a couple. There were like two or three moments that both him and Nick's worst in were like, "Oh, do it this way." Because for the yeah. most part, I did my own thing. But there were a couple of moments that they offered me um, a way to perform it, and I took it, and it worked really well. So that was nice. You Especially mentioned all. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, especially from Nick's worst in, who's just so funny. And so when he would give me little tidbits, it was, it was gold. Where I was going with is like, you know, like you mentioned like all these comedians that are, that are on the, and, and actors too, that are on the, in the film. Uh, who was your favorite like scene with, would you say? Um, or most, working with? Well, I, I mean, mostly I worked with, with Nick and Josh. That was my main counterparts and I love them both, but I really appreciated, uh, Nick Swarston because oh his just his like certainty with his comedy is so um inspiring I don't know he just and he will like I said he was always feeding little like making up lines on the spot and I would take them and see if they uh, work that was I was cool. hoping I was hoping you were going to say that because I've had other guests that have worked with them and they pretty much he likes to like not ad lib but he'll sometimes he'll, he'll go off script and they keep going Oh yeah. That's his thing. That's what he does. He's really good at it. And I think he gets hired for that too. Right. And then also because the two of them are friends outside of work, there's that comfort to just, and so, and he'll also go, he'll do this thing where he goes, um, Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Say this. And he'll say it super deadpan. He'll like feed you a line. And he's like, yeah, say that. That'll be funny. And I'm like, okay. And then I say <laughs> it. It's really funny. <laughs> 
What, what are you hoping for, like, the audience remembers from your performance for, from this movie? Um, I hope they just enjoy and laugh. Yeah. And, uh, oh, what is, that's a good question. What do I hope they remember? Um, I just had so much fun being larger than life and being so wild. And I hope that it, it brings them, I just hope it brings a smile on their face. We don't get comedies like this all the time, but like, remember like in the nineties, we used to get a lot more of these type of movies. Now it's like rare. So it's yeah. good to get one of these once in a while. It was, it was actually, uh, my father-in-law watched it, bless him. <laughs> and he, he called up and he said, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, these guys are from the eighties or nineties and they never grew up. And it's like, it's just like, it was like taking him back. And I was like, that's yeah. exactly what, what it is. He really under, cause this movie's not for everybody, right. but those who get it, get it in that way. Yeah. And now it's available on streaming also. Streaming on Paramount plus. So, uh, I'm hoping the viewers in, that listen to this can, uh, Go watch it. Also, I, I like I said, I loved it. I loved the first one. This one was as good. What's next for you now? Any other projects you're allowed to tell us about? Uh, what am I? I'm working on some. I'm working on a theater project here in Vancouver right now. So that's a uh, ha- company named Pi Theater. I know a lot of the viewers aren't necessarily from Vancouver, so they can't come. But uh, that one's a very serious topic. Of it's called Truth and Lies, and it's about the internet and how it can manipulate people's beliefs and what it's causing these days so that's kind of a heavier topic and then i have a couple other films coming out in uh in the fall but i can't talk about them yet so i just said <laughs> yeah <laughs> amazing carol now how can the listeners and the viewers uh find you on uh, social media keep up with you for any future news absolutely i'm on instagram as carmel.amit a-m-i-t carmel this is great uh thank you for giving me for today and uh let's get you back on with future projects absolutely thank you thank you